It's Sunday run day, day 14 of the Body Shaping for Women Over 50 series. Let's go! All right, killer bees, let's get moving and grooving. And that means that we're getting started with some arm circles with high knees. Ah, you guys, welcome to the workout. I'm so excited about this one. <laughs> I'm Paula E. I'm your best middle-aged fitness friend, and around here we are all about making peace with your menopausal body, and we are literally smack dab in the middle of this Body Shaping for Women Over 50 series. I'm so excited for two reasons. Number one, because it's Sunday run day, and I love to run. I fully appreciate the fact that this might be the day of the week that you least look forward to, and so I'm just gonna tell you straight up, like I tell you every Sunday, and I'm gonna continue to tell you every Sunday, if you don't want to run, don't run. There is, there's no running police. You never, ever, 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 ever have to run. If you want to run, today's intervals are pretty doable. I've got my timer set for one minute of walking and 30 seconds of running. That might, if you are brand new to running, never run before, that might still be a little bit aggressive. Feel free to take more walking breaks and run as much or as little as you want. Also, if you are not familiar with running barefoot, please put on shoes. I've been doing this for years and years and years, and this is not difficult for me. Let's go ahead and do some arm closers, arm openers. <laughs> closers and openers, <laughs> booty kickers. I was so intent on thinking about wearing shoes. I've been running barefoot indoors for, can I do math? At least six years. I think my very first indoor running Workout was 2014. I'll look that up. It was either 2014 or 2015. So at least five years for sure. Because I don't think it was 2016. Anyways, for many years. <laughs> I have lots and lots and lots of experience with it. I've been running outdoors with shoes for even longer than that. This is not, this is not a difficult workout for me and it's not difficult to do barefoot. I fully appreciate that this might be the toughest work of your week. Don't make it that. This is a moderate day. This is supposed to be gentle, supposed to feel good. We're chatting, we're talking, we're having fun. If you would rather not walk, you are actually welcome to do anything you want or, or depending on, I mean, with regular YouTube, you can't download the videos, but you could, if you have YouTube read, let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes. You could actually take outside for a walk if you wanted to. You can, you can do whatever you want with these videos at any point in time. I hope though that you will join us for the conversation because that's what we're talking about today is how we are halfway through. We're gonna talk a little bit about how you're feeling, how things are going, and what we're gonna expect on the second half because you know that we are always planning for tomorrow. I'm gonna to go ahead and get started with the walking. If you're not ready yet, not quite warmed up enough, go ahead and do a little bit more warm ups. But I am, I'm feeling warm, my friends. Plus, I'm excited about moving and grooving. <laughs> so I was weirdly doing a little side tapping rather than walking. You guys, I'm really excited to talk to you about being halfway done. Partly for me, just from a filming perspective, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, putting together a 29 day series like this, it is very different logistically than anything else I do. So, so for me personally, this feels like a huge relief because I've had this project on my mind for a long time and I've been working towards it. And so getting the filming moving and moving forward, it, it feels really good to be halfway done. And I know that that might be how you're feeling about doing the workouts too. That being halfway done, because that sounds more like a glass half full kind of situation to me. Not like, you know, I'm only halfway done, but I am, I'm halfway through this. It feels very exciting. It feels like a milestone. So I'm gonna pick this up to a little jiggity jog here. You are welcome to walk more briskly or walk the same pace. Whatever feels moderate for you is 100% okay with me. We're keeping this moderate today because you already know that tomorrow is a push day. Tomorrow we're picking up heavy things and we're putting them back down. So we are not stressing ourselves out today. We are thinking about fueling for tomorrow. So even though today's workout isn't especially difficult, it's nice and moderate, we're actually gonna eat a little bit above baseline, really preparing for tomorrow's push. For me personally, and I've explained this before, but I'm gonna go ahead and remind you that for me personally, it means that I'm gonna eat a little bit more carbs. I tend to love carbs, <laughs> but also I tend to think of 
energy for any kind of a workout as being a little bit more carby. Because, because I happen to love carbs, I think about them as fuel. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm gonna eat junk. I mean, I will probably have a bowl of cereal, which is kind of junk food, but it's also not, it's not an excuse to eat, to eat junk, but it is a reason to think about what's going to feel best tomorrow. For me, most carby kind of foods burn pretty well. I'm used to it. I've been running for so many years that my body is really capable of accessing that for energy for tomorrow's workout. And some of it is mental too. I'm used to eating that way for you know a long run or a push day. So therefore it just feels good to me. I am still paying attention to it though. And that is something that we're gonna talk about today about paying attention to how, how you've been doing. How has your fueling been going? How have your workouts been going? Are you feeling energetic? Are you feeling like you are fueling, specifically, are you fueling well for the effort that you want to be able to put in? Are you feeling as though you're getting what you want out of every workout? And I mean that, with a grain of salt, because I know that if you are coming to this program after having gone push, 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 push every day, that all this moderation might not feel like what you want to get out of your workouts, except that two weeks in, you're probably starting to notice the magic of moderation. You're probably starting to notice that you actually have energy to live the rest of your life, that you actually might be sleeping better, you might be just feeling better, not so achy, not so sore, not so constantly feeling like you're on the edge of an injury. That is the magic of moderation. That also means if you're not feeling constantly sore, constantly tired, that your body is capable of making the adaptations that you really want it to make. That one push day, that one push day is giving you the results that you want. Everything else that we do is totally for your health benefit. We're working on our healthy bones, we're working on healthy muscles, we're working on healthy heart and lungs, we're working on flexibility, we're working on core strength, we're working on balance, we're working on all systems. But that push day specifically, where we are really building powerful, strong muscles, when we can fuel for that and recover the rest of the time with moderation and with actual recovery days, that is how we're going to see and feel real results from this program. So, so what are you seeing and feeling so far? I know it's only, technically only been two weeks. At our age, at our age, you're not gonna see and feel a ton of differences. I'm hoping that you are already noticing things about your body. That's actually the result that I'm looking for for you, is that you're starting to really hone in on the brain-body connection where you know what it feels like when you've got your core pulled in, where you know what it feels like when you've been doing strength training, where you're starting to notice the difference between when you eat that fuels a workout really well and when you eat and fuels a workout kind of poorly, when you don't have as much energy. When we start paying attention to all of the subtle signals that our body is giving us, that's when we can start to make adjustments and really, really work on getting even more results out of our program. Now, after only two weeks, if this is really new to you, I don't expect you to be ready to really make a lot of adjustments. If you've noticed something really specific, like, oh, there's this one dinner that I had that just left me feeling exhausted the next morning, okay, that's a really easy adjustment. <laughs> or if you've noticed that, you know, the first time after our push day that you were just so exhausted and so sore that it was too much of a push, definitely make adjustments like like that. There are some there are some feedback loops that are much faster than others. Some other ones take a little bit more time. And those are the kinds of things that I'm going to have you continue paying attention to. As you tweak little things, thinking about, you know, do I want to eat something more carby tonight or do I want to eat something with more protein tonight? And then take notes, think about how you feel tomorrow, pay attention 
and make those little adjustments as you go. You are always an experiment of one. And so even though I'm telling you, oh, this is what works for me and this is how great I feel and blah, 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 that does not mean that it's gonna work perfectly for you. Every, every piece of advice that I give you is based on some science, almost always, <laughs> and a lot of anecdotal evidence. And much of that anecdotal evidence is just from me. Yes, I have worked with clients. I have seen things that work. I mean, eating, eating healthier is good for everybody. But healthy, even healthy, isn't always healthy for everybody. My husband, for example, can't eat apples. He has to be careful about eating. It's called a FODMAP diet, F-O-D-M-A-P. And I don't remember exactly what that stands for. It does stand for something. But there are certain foods that are actually healthy. Avocados, apples, those are the two that I can think of off the top of my head. A couple of other things that just didn't settle well with him. So just because they're healthy foods, they work well with my body, they don't work well with his. When you are eating healthy, pay attention to how it feels. It might not be healthy for you. Hi, Rosie. My cat Rosie just came in, sat down on the ground. I'm pretty sure she's in frame. I think I see her in the camera. She just wanted to come and talk about healthy eating. She's probably hungry and that's why she's coming in here to talk to me right now. But you guys, making adjustments so that you can get the best results out of your program. Some of them are gonna be day-to-day -day adjustments. Some of them might be adjustments like, oh yeah, I've noticed that I really need to get to bed a little bit earlier because I'm tired enough to sleep through the night because you're working out so regularly and at a little bit different level than you're used to. Some of the adjustments might be something like, yeah, I noticed that I'm really thirsty because again, we're sweating every day. Little things like that are the kind of adjustments that I anticipate that you're learning how to make right now. The other kind of adjustments that you might make in a little bit broader sense, now that you've seen two weeks worth of how this rotation goes, you might, depending on, depending on your schedule and what works with you, you might adjust the program in terms of which days you do which things. Push down on Monday doesn't work for everybody. I totally understand that. I happen to like it. It's the beginning of the week. It works for me mentally. It works for me physically because generally speaking on Monday, everybody else in my house has gone to work or school. And so it's a good time for me to be in my own zone. You might, moving forward, Push that one day or two days or wherever you want to. Now, if you're following along when the videos come out one by one, you're probably gonna continue to follow along. But in the future, when you repeat the program, you can make the days be whatever day you want. As long as you get a recovery day after your push day, everything else, truly, everything else is movable. Everything else is adjustable. Everything else can be swapped out with other things. And this is what I'm gonna tell you about when you repeat the program even further on down the line. While you're doing it right now, the kind of adjustments that you're gonna make might be a little bit minor. But here's what you might be able to do later. This particular body shaping program is really, really focused on building muscle. That is, that is what I think of as like a traditional body shaping. Because we're building muscles, you're gonna see a difference in your arms, you're gonna see a difference in your shape. You might change sizes in clothing. There will be, there will be muscular changes in your body. But this type of training, with a push day, two recovery days, four moderate days, can actually be adjusted to anything. This could be a running schedule where you have a push day and moderate days and recovery and core days. This could be a cardio, other kinds of cardio, not running, push. You can have whatever kind of workout you want on that push day. If 
If you wanted to, that push day could be an all abs and core kind of day where you're really pushing to develop some very, very strong abdominal muscles really specifically. For example, not necessarily suggesting that that's what you can or should do, but you, you can. It's available to you to pick one kind of adaptation that you want to make and use this type of program by plugging in different workouts. I will tell you that the moderate workouts can be plugged into almost anything. <laughs> like truly almost any kind of adaptation that you want to make, those moderate days are really good because we're doing a little bit of everything. We're doing cardio, we're doing strength, we're doing cardio toning, we're doing running. Those, those kind of work with almost any kind of an adaptation you might wanna make. But this is why learning this ebb and flow, learning how to push, how to moderate, how to rest and recover, how to fuel, how to plan ahead, how to think about your training as coming in cycles of approximately four weeks long, if not longer, kind of depends, but generally speaking, four weeks is a really good chunk of time where we can be working on one specific adaptation before we move on to another. You can also, I mean, I, I'm saying this as though you have to do something differently. You could do this exact workout routine, 28 days, over and over and over and over. You could get to the point where you memorize everything I say in every single workout and still be getting body shaping results. This, this type of training is always how you're going to get results like literally always, for any kind of a result that you want, you need to be changing intensities. You need to be planning ahead. You need to be fueling for your workouts. You need to be focused. You need to know what you want to get out of it. These are all really universal skills. And it's the kind of thing that I'm hoping that you are noticing and starting to pay attention to. I will tell you that on, on my journey, when I first started working out, I was all running all the time. I feel like I have probably shared this with you at some time, but you might be new to my channel, so you might not have ever heard this. The first time I ever really exercised regularly, I was in my late 30s, and I decided somewhat on a whim <laughs> that I was gonna learn how to run. <laughs> and I still don't know why. <laughs> I, I had plenty of evidence from the 37 years prior in my life that I was not good at running, that I was not athletic, that I was not coordinated enough to do anything else, and that I was probably only going to do that for a few weeks and then fail and never do it again. I had plenty of reasons not to, and yet, and yet I was kind of compelled to give it a try anyways. And then, and then, I mean, seriously, completely out of the blue, completely randomly, I loved it. I loved it so much that it basically became my life. I was, I was not athletic, I was not fit, I did not care about exercise, I did not care about my health, really. I was 37, I didn't care much yet. And the older I get, the more I care about staying on my feet for a long time, but at the time, I was young, I was gonna live forever, you know? I mean, do you remember? Do you remember how that felt? When we were young and you just didn't even think about not living forever. But anyway, all I did was running. And I learned through trial and error that you cannot push every day because I tried to push every day. And then, and then I followed a couple of different programs that had me doing this kind of thing with a push and not as much moderation. Again, I was younger and truly most most exercise programs that you are going to come across out in the world are gonna have more push days. They're gonna have more what they call quality workouts. <laughs> I have an opinion about that, as you can probably tell from my face. Every workout you do is quality. There's no such thing as junk miles. There's no such thing as a junk workout. Everything you do is building towards something. And that is a rant to the aside, so I'm gonna let that go right now. Anyway, I followed a couple of different programs, but I didn't really internalize this message for, I'm gonna say years. <laughs> I'm kind of a slow learner with stuff like this. I really, I, I still am a slow learner with stuff like this. I still, 
would love to push every day. I would love to. But I have learned that not pushing every day is the way to actually get what you want out of the workouts. And it's why I'm saying it so explicitly to you. I never followed a program that explained why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. I want you to understand this. There's a reason why we moderate. It's so your body can continue making adaptations from that one hard workout. Your body needs the entire week to make adaptations from the one push workout. Everything else that we are doing is in support of that one push. Everything that we are fueling truly is also in support of that one push. That push is the point of our week. It is the point of our whole program. So this is what I'm going to tell you about making adjustments. Make sure that the, the workout that you are really focusing on is that push workout and find your exact amount of push. I know, I know that it's hard to find the exact amount of recovery and the exact amount of moderation also, but those are going to come a little bit more, I think, easily to you when you find the push because you're going to need to recover when you find the right amount of push, when you find the amount of push that feels almost like too much, weirdly because then you have to back off to let your body do what it's gonna do. You have to do some moderate stuff because I know that tomorrow it's gonna be really hard. <laughs> so I really wanna not use all my energy today. When you are thinking about why we are doing what we're doing, you can make whatever adjustments you need to make. You guys, it took me, like I said, years to figure out why I was doing what I was doing. I have, I have no timeline for you. You are probably impatient, if I had to guess, if you're anything like me at all. You might be feeling impatient. You want results, you want them now. You don't really care how you get them. You care a little bit. But this, this conversation <laughs> is really important. When you know exactly what to do and how to make your adjustments in your program, you will be completely unstoppable. Seriously, you will realize that you can make any adaptation that you want to. Think about that. What do you want to do with your body? You could do anything. You can make this kind of program do anything with your body. That's a really amazing feeling, isn't it? It really puts the power on you. Knowledge is power my friends. This is going to be our last walking interval. I'm going to cool it down after this because I know that this was a lot to take in. <laughs> like always, I, I feel like I have a lot to share with you. Make sure that you have also downloaded the 16 page information resource. There's a link in the description box below, which means that you have to be on desktop or mobile. There's also a link in the comments. I have a, a pinned comment on every one of these videos. I know that YouTube makes both the comments and the description box not entirely easy to find unless you know where they are. If you don't know where they are, I mean, you can Google it. I also, it seems to me like I have a, seems to me like in one of my videos, I had a little screenshot of how to find the description box. In any event, make sure that you get the information resource that goes along with this program so that you can really start absorbing this knowledge, so that you can start absorbing and figuring out exactly what, what you wanna do, what adjustments you wanna make and what you wanna do with this program for you. Let's go ahead and do some arm circles and cool this down, bring your heart rate down. Ah, you guys, plan for tomorrow. Tomorrow's push day. Are you ready for it? <laughs> We're gonna pick up really heavy things. We're gonna put them back down. It's gonna be tough. We're probably gonna, well, I'm just gonna, we're definitely gonna grunt. There will be grunting. There probably won't be crying or swearing. I mean, I'm gonna try my best. <laughs> I can almost guarantee there'll be a little bit of complaining. <laughs> It's such a different Paula on push day. I know, I know you guys. It's why I love this program so much. <laughs> Make sure that you are fueled for it. Make sure that you are both mentally and physically ready for push day tomorrow by not pushing too much today. Let's go ahead and do some arm openers. <sighs> 
and arm closers. I do have an extended cool down for you at the end of this one. I, I know that, I mean, again, I fully appreciate that, that this might feel like right on the edge of, of too much. I mean, especially coming on yesterday's heels with the cardio toning, where that one, that one's right on the edge of moderate. Making sure that you're paying attention, you're doing what works best for you, you're making adjustments, you're getting what you want out of this program. My friends, I'm so proud of you. What a great job you're doing. Make sure that you subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow.